Binondo, 1920. Here, 100 years ago, men of courage and vision founded China Bank to help a community of struggling but worthy merchants and traders achieve their dreams. They were driven by an impeccable code of trust and respect through the hard times and the good times. That's how China Bank successfully partnered with four, five generations of loyal clients. Today, China Bank keeps pace with evolving technology while remaining grounded on integrity and prudence. China Bank, celebrating the past, embracing the future. Times change, but values remain.
Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the 2022 annual stockholders meeting of China Banking Corporation being conducted virtually. Let me introduce the members of the board of directors with us today. Chairman Hans C. Vice Chairman Gilbert D. President William Wang. Our other directors, Mr. Peter D. Mr. Joaquin D. Mr. Herbert C. Mr. Harley C. Mr. Jose Shaw. Mr. M Ms. Margarita San Juan. Mr. Philip Tsai. Ms. Claire Ann Yap. And Mr. Genaro Lapez. Our advisor to the board and former president, Mr. Ricardo Chua, is also with us. Also logged in are members of the China Bank management team, including our chief operating officer, Mr. Romeo Uyan Jr. and our chief finance officer, Mr. Patrick Cheng. Let me now give the floor to the chairman of the board, Mr. Hans C. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. Similar to our regular meeting last year, today's annual meeting of stockholders is on an online only event. Joining us in this meeting are your board members led by Vice Chairman Gilbert D, President William Huang, Lead Independent Director and Chairman of Nomination Committee and Corporate Governance Committee, Margarita San Juan, an independent director and audit committee chairman, Claire Ann Yap, our board advisor, Mr. Rick Chua, corporate secretary, attorney Leilani Elarmo, investors relation group head, Gerald Florentino, and representatives of our external auditor, SGB and company are also present. I am now calling the meeting to order. Our next item in our agenda is the proof of notice of meeting. Madam Secretary, have we sent the required notice of meeting? Good afternoon. Yes, Mr. Chairman, we have notified our stockholders about this meeting in accordance with the Securities and Exchange Commission or SEC's Memorandum Circular Number 6, Series of 2020, Sections 23, 49, 50, 57, and other related provisions of the Revised Corporation Code and SEC Notice dated February 16, 2022, on the alternative modes for distributing documents in connection with the holding of the ASM for 2022. We have also published the notice of today's meeting in the business section of the Philippine Star and Philippine Daily Inquirer in print and online formats on March 31 and April 1, 2022. Also, electronic copies of our notice with explanation of agenda items, information statement, management report, annual report, and other pertinent documents are available on our website, www.chinabank.ph and on the Philippine Stock Exchange or the PSE's EDGE submission system. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Number three in our agenda is the certification of quorum. Do we have a quorum, Madam Secretary? Yes, Mr. Chairman. I certify the existence of a quorum for this meeting. Based on record, out of a total number of 2,691,288,212 subscribed and outstanding shares, the holders of 2,136,169,633 shares or 79.533% shares are present through remote communication by proxy or in absentia. Such number represents more than two thirds of the outstanding capital stock of the bank. The final count of attendees will be reflected in the minutes, Mr. Chairman. 
Thank you. Next in our agenda is the approval of the minutes of the 2021 annual stockholders meeting. May we have the proposed resolution and the results of voting for this agenda item, Madam Secretary. Mr. Chairman, the minutes of the annual meeting of stockholders on May 6, 2021 can be accessed through the bank's website and were included in our information statement. For this item in the agenda, the adoption of the resolution displayed on the screen is being proposed in order to approve the minutes for all intents and purposes. On the votes cast, 2,136,106,642 shares or 99.97% of the shares represented in this meeting voted in favor of the resolution. Therefore, Mr. Chairman, the resolution is approved. Thank you, Madam Secretary. The next item in the agenda is the annual report to stockholders. To provide information about your bank's activity, business, and financial performances, and the relevant data for the year 2021, I now request our president, Mr. William Wang, to deliver his report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My fellow directors, shareholders, China bankers and friends, good afternoon. There are positive signs that the toll of COVID-19 on global health and its wider economic and social impact are waning. Finally, the world is learning to live with the pandemic. Now everyone can focus on sustainable recovery and building up resilience should this virus become endemic. While 2021 continued to be challenging, it has been a year of hope and optimism as infection cases drop amid higher vaccination rates and business activities increased with the reopening of the economy. The global economy grew an estimated 5.9% in 2021, a welcome turnaround from the 3.1% contraction in 2020. The Philippines, despite being battered by the pandemic and typhoons Fabian and Odette, showed great resilience. Our gross domestic product grew 12% in the second quarter of 2021, effectively lifting the country out of recession. The further easing of mobility restrictions in the fourth quarter perked up consumer spending and brought the full-year economic growth to 5.6% from negative 9.6% in 2020. The accelerated vaccination drive, combined with the government's policy support and game-changing reforms, boosted optimism for the country's rebound in 2021 and strong growth prospects in 2022. To make loans accessible, the BSP kept the policy rate at its record low of 2% for the entire year. Stimulus measures like the extension of the availability of the 2020 national budget and funds appropriated through Bayanihan II, the Corporate Recovery and Tax Incentives for Enterprises Act, the Financial Institutions Strategic Transfer Act, and amendments to the Foreign Investment Act and the Retail Trade Liberalization Act were signed into law to help the Philippine economy recover from the pandemic shock. At China Bank, we continue to prioritize people's safety as we pursued growth and contributed to a more vibrant economy. In 2021, we settled into the rhythm of new normal operations, keeping what worked in 2020 and avoiding what did not adapting and innovating at the speed of need, deftly balancing crisis management, and forward thinking and pushing ourselves, our systems, and our businesses to operate at their best to keep China Bank firmly on track, and most importantly, to better serve our customers. We ended 2021 with 9,747 employees. 
As of May 1, 2022, 98% of our workforce have been fully vaccinated. Booster shots are also being administered since late last year. We also sustain the logistical support to keep our people safe. Our 637 branches nationwide are safe havens for face-to-face -face transactions, while our digital platforms and electronic banking channels, which include our 1,037 ATMs, enable convenient banking access and support the transition to a cashless society. Transactions via China Bank Online, mobile app, and e-banking facilities like ATM continued to surge, accounting for 67% of our total banking transactions last year. We accelerated our digital transformation to provide our customers utmost convenience and security. In 2021, we enhanced China Bank mobile app adding the scan to pay feature for easy QR code payments and the InstaPay 2.0 multi-proxy feature for secure fund transfers by just using a mobile number or email address. In the pipeline this year are more digital initiatives, including the launch of China Bank Start, so new customers can easily open a China Bank account via app China Bank Digital 2.0, a new institutional website and automated marketing. We take pride in our team's hard work and dedication to serve and support our customers and the execution of our strategies that enabled us to post consistent year-on-year -year growth in quarterly net income since the start of the pandemic in 2020. China Bank ended 2021 stronger than ever before, with 15.1 billion in net income, 25% higher compared to 2020, on the back of sustained core business growth and effective cost management. This translated to an improved return on equity of 13.6% and return on assets of 1.5%. Net interest income grew 13% to $38.3 billion, driven by loans growth and lower interest expense. Net interest margin further improved to 4.2%. Fee-based income, on the other hand, grew 3% to $10.4 billion, underpinned by a 39% increase in core fee-based income. The growth in operating expenses was controlled at 4% to $22.3 billion. Our conscious efforts to manage expenses while investing in growth strategies resulted in a better cost-to-income ratio of 46% from 49%, the lowest among our peer banks. Other key indicators were likewise positive. Total assets of $1.1 trillion up 7%, Total deposits of $863 billion up 3%, with an improved CASA ratio of 64% from 56%, and net loans of $609 billion up 9%. As we continued to provide credit to business and individuals, we kept a close eye on asset quality. Our non-performing loans ratio of 2.5%, and NPL coverage of 116% are better than industry averages. Total capital increased 13% to $119 billion. The healthy capital ratios also reflect your bank's financial soundness. Common equity tier 1 ratio of 14.9% and total capital adequacy ratio of 15.7%. In 2021, the bond market was robust amid government and corporations' heightened financial needs. The equity market was likewise vibrant. The Philippine Stock Exchange had a record-breaking year and was named Southeast Asia's best stock exchange by Alpha Southeast Asia. 
Through our investment banking arm, China Bank Capital, we help many issuers raise their financing requirements from the local debt market and at the same time focused on bringing new names and products to the market, promoting financial inclusiveness to gain a wider investing public and working closely with regulators to broaden and deepen the domestic capital markets amid the ongoing pandemic. China Bank Capital maintained its position as the leading investment house in the domestic debt capital markets and the number one book runner for fixed income deals in the Philippines. It also participated in a wide range of transactions spanning sovereign issuances, bank bonds, and U.S. dollar securities. We are incredibly proud and honored that China Bank was named the best bank in the Philippines in 2021 and China Bank Capital as the best bond advisor domestic for the sixth consecutive year by the asset. China Bank also emerged as the second strongest bank in the Philippines and among the top 20% in the Asia Pacific region in the Asian Bankers 500 Strongest Banks ranking in 2021. These recognitions reflect our commitment to be the best banking partner for our customers and inspire us to keep on doing our best even in the most challenging of circumstances. The awards came on the heels of validations from rating agencies of China Bank's financial stability and creditworthiness. Moody's Investor Service affirmed our investment grade credit rating of BAA2, while the Philippine Rating Services Corporation gave us the highest credit rating of PRS AAA Corporate. Both ratings carry a stable outlook. Our financial strength is underpinned by our commitment to do well by doing good, maintaining high governance standards, and focusing on sustainability. The ASEAN Capital Markets Forum distinguished China Bank as among the top three publicly listed companies in the Philippines and among the top 20 in ASEAN and as an ASEAN asset class. We also received the Institute of Corporate Directors' highest recognition for corporate governance, the Four Golden Arrow, for our strong support for the various initiatives to build an inclusive and increasingly digital Philippine economy, the Banco Central ng Filipinas named China Bank as an outstanding stakeholder. From continuous service, process, and system enhancements to improve customer experience, to various initiatives to contribute to a sustainable future, China Bank is driven to create value every day in any way we can. For our shareholders, we paid a total of 2.69 billion or one peso per share cash dividends in 2021. The consistent payment of dividends is a testament to China Bank's financial well-being and future prospects. For our employees, we issued 5.4 million shares to about 8 1,400 qualified China Bank Group employees under the Centennial Stock Grant Plan. This equity gift of 100 shares for every year of service is a big gesture of appreciation for the dedication of our partners in success. They're the ones who take care of our customers, make strategic decisions, and take all the risk. Having a great team of people is one of the pillars of our success. For the revival of Manila and for the next generation of China bankers and customers, we completed the restoration of our original headquarters in Binondo and the construction of the China Bank Museum. The China Bank Binondo Business Center bears the historical markers from the National Historical Commission of the Philippines and the National Museum signifying the NHCP's recognition of our 100-year history and of our original head office built in 1924 as a heritage site. 
and the National Museum's confirmation of the building's cultural significance to the country. This year, we are moving forward, more confident than ever in China Bank's capabilities to achieve our goals amid the challenges and opportunities ahead. We are determined to expand our business through CASA and loans growth and to future-proof our growth by focusing on asset quality, digital banking transformation, and ESG implementation. The pandemic has taught us the importance of preparing for and adapting to shifting conditions while remaining supportive of the customers and communities we serve. We continue to monitor and assess the pandemic's impact on our business and our responsiveness to the evolving environment. Speaking of adapting to shifting conditions, we strengthened our business continuity strategy and our infrastructure capacity for 100% on-site workers with our Mega Tower Extension Office. About 32% of our employees working in head office and main offices in Makati have transferred to this state-of-the-art facility in Mandaluyong, which is equipped with modern air ventilation, air filtration, and UV technologies to ensure our employees' safety. As we face geopolitical and economic headwinds, we also will have a new leader soon. Hopefully, someone to unite the country to take on the difficult challenges ahead. Your bank is well prepared for this. We will also be there for our stakeholders whenever they need us. On behalf of the China Bank Board, I thank all of you for staying the course with us and for believing that we could rise above the adversities together. I hope you and your family stay safe and stay hopeful. Thank you. Thank you, William. Madam Secretary, may we have the proposed resolution on this item and the voting results. Yes, Mr. Chairman. The adoption of the resolution displayed on the screen is being proposed in order to approve the annual report. On the votes cast, 2,135,138,268 shares or 99.95% of the shares represented in this meeting voted in favor of the resolution. Thus, the resolution is approved, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Let us proceed to the next item in the agenda. Number six in the agenda is the approval of the audited financial statements. In his annual report earlier, President William Wang presented the financial performance and the changes in the bank's financial position for the year 2021. May we have the proposed resolutions on this item and the voting results, Madam Secretary. Yes, Mr. Chairman. The audited financial statements were also included in our information statement posted on the bank's website and on the EDGE submission system of the PSE. For this item in the agenda, Mr. Chairman, the adoption of the resolution displayed on the screen is being proposed in order to approve the 2021 audited financial statements. On the voting results, 2,135,138,268 shares or 99.95% of the shares represented in this meeting voted in favor of the resolution. The resolution is therefore approved, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. The next item in the agenda is the ratification of all acts of the board, executive committee, other committees and management. Madam Secretary, do we have the proposed resolution and the voting results for this matter? Yes, Mr. Chairman, we have shown on the screen the proposed resolution for the stockholders to ratify all acts of the board of directors 
executive committee, other committees, and management during the year 2021 and immediately preceding this stockholders meeting, including the ratification of related party transactions and ratification of the February 2, 2022 approval of the board exercising its delegated power to amend Article 3, Section 1 of the bylaws relating to the schedule of the regular meeting of stockholders. This is to comply with the requirements of the revised corporation code and address the comments of the Banco Central ng Pilipinas. On the voting results, Mr. Chairman, 2,135,138,268 shares or 99.95% of the shares represented in this meeting voted for the adoption of the resolution. The resolution is therefore adopted, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Madam Secretary. The next order of business is the election of the members of the Board of Directors for 2022 to 2023. Independent Director and Chairman of the Nomination and Corporate Governance Committee, Ms. Margarita San Juan, will announce the nominees. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. Based on the determination by the Nominations and Corporate Governance Committees, and as confirmed by the Board of Directors, the following nominees for directors and independent directors were found to be fit and proper for the position and possess all the qualifications and none of the disqualifications of a director or independent director. And their capabilities are aligned with the bank's strategic directions. The nominees for director are Mr. Hans E. C., Mr. Gilbert U. D., Mr. William C. Wong, Mr. Peter S. D., Mr. Joaquin T. D., Mr. Herbert T. C., Mr. Hardy T. C., and Mr. Jose T. Shaw. The nominees for independent director are Ms. Margarita L. San Juan, Mr. Philip S. L. Chai, Ms. Claire Ann T. Yap, and Mr. Genaro V. Lapez. Thank you, Ms. San Juan. Madam Secretary, may we have the result of the election? Mr. Chairman, for the ensuing year, the bank shall have eight regular directors and four independent directors. Based on the tally of votes and as confirmed by CSIP, Gores, Velayo and Company, the independent party tasked to count and validate the votes at today's meeting. The 12 nominees enumerated by the chairperson of the nominations and corporate governance committees and listed in the definitive information statement of the bank are declared duly elected directors. The percentage of votes garnered by each director based on the number of shares represented in this meeting are shown on the screen. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Let us proceed to the next item in the agenda. For number nine in our agenda, which is the appointment of external auditor, may I ask Ms. Claire Anyok, chairperson of the audit committee, to make the recommendation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The audit committee, composed of myself, Director Joe Pokindi, and Independent Director Philip Tsai, has evaluated the performance in the past year of CSIP, Gores, Velayo, and Company the bank's current external auditor and found it to be satisfactory. The audit committee, as well as the board of directors, 
agreed to endorse for reappointment of CISIC Gores Velayo and Company as the bank's external auditor for the ensuing year. Thank you, Ms. Yok. I will now ask our secretary to present the proposed resolutions on this item and the voting results. Mr. Chairman, the adoption of the resolution shown on the screen is being proposed relative to the reappointment of the external auditor. On the voting results, Mr. Chairman, 2,136,106,642 or 99.99% of the shares represented in this meeting voted in favor of the resolution. The resolution is approved, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Before we proceed, I am glad to announce that your board of directors in a meeting held yesterday declared the following cash dividend. Regular cash dividend of one peso per share and special cash dividend of 50 centavos per share. The total peso amount of the cash dividend will is 4.04 billion pesos, 50% higher from the 2.69 billion last year. Further, your board approved to set May 20, 2022 as the record date and June 3, 2022 as the payment date of the cash dividend. We will now address questions and comments from our stockholders sent via email. As mentioned in the guidelines for participation in this meeting, which was posted on the bank's website, any questions or comments submitted and received, but not addressed during this live stream shall be answered directly by email to the stockholders concerned. Let us now call our Head of Investors and Corporate Relations Group, Mr. Gerald Florentino, who will read aloud the question and comments together with the names of the stockholders who sent them. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We have a question from Mr. Jaime de la Cruz. Would the bank be open to tie-ups with foreign banks, just like what has been done by some of its peers and competitors. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. De La Cruz, for asking the question. <clears throat> yes, our bank is uh, definitely open to any strategic investor who can bring value to our business. Uh, value in terms of strengthening our core business, like introducing technology that can bring a competitive advantage to China Bank. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wang. We have another question from Ms. Hanna Lopez. With the increased competition and very low interest rates for checking and savings accounts, how do you plan to encourage people to save and increase your CASA deposits? Uh, thank you, Ms. Lopez. Yes, this year, the bank uh, introduced several sales incentives, uh, starting with the launch of external uh, and an internal CASA promotion to reward our loyal customers while increasing awareness among our branches uh, on the value of CASA to our business. And at the same time, uh, generating you to bank customers uh, to ensure that our business continue to grow. Uh, we also remind our branches that preserving the personal relationship is the gold standard for customer delight in China Bank. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Wang. Yeah. We have another question from uh, Mr. Gilbert Antiquera. Considering the massive online banking fraud incident <coughs> transpired in late 2021, how is China Bank ensuring the security of its clients' accounts? Thank you, Mr. Antiquera, for that's a good question. Uh, well, we take IT security uh, of the bank very seriously. Uh, foremost in our major initiative is the 
definitely the protection of accounts and transactions of our customers. IT security has uh, one of China Bank's um, major annual operating budget, and it will continue to do so. We have cybersecurity program aligned with best practice, uh, and this is constantly reviewed together by our information security office, our risk management, and our IT team. Thank you again, uh, Mr. Wang. Uh, Mr. Chairman, that concludes our question and answer session. Again, we will reply directly by email to all other questions from our stockholders. For any other questions or concerns, you may send them through the email address displayed on the screen. Thank you, Gerald. If there's no other matters to be taken up, the meeting is hereby adjourned. On behalf of the Board of Directors and Management of China Bank, we express our gratitude to all those who participated in today's meeting. Thank you, everyone, for your continued support.